Today on The Joy of Editing, it is Nick Color Effects, part of Nick Collection 7. I'm calling this one Exploring Possibilities. We're going to have some fun today, so stay tuned. Hello, everyone, and welcome to The Joy of Editing with Dave Kelly. Today, I'll be working with Nick Color Effects, one of the plugins inside of the Nick Collection 7, and I'll be working from Photoshop. By the way, all of the software over at the DxO website is on sale right now at 20% off. So now's a good time to pick up some DxO software like the Nick Collection 7 if you're interested in it. I will have affiliate links in the description below. If you use my affiliate link, I make a small commission, and this helps me to keep tutorials coming your way. And I really want to thank all of you who use my affiliate links. I really appreciate it. All right, then, let's get started. I'm working from a stock image today. If you want to give this edit a try, I will link this image in the description below this video. To launch color effects, I'm using the Nick Collection 7 palette. If your palette isn't open, come up to File, come down to Automate, and then look for Nick Collection 7 palette. Give that a click and your palette will open up. And then all you need to do is click on Nick 7 Color Effects and you'll launch Color Effects. And here we are with Nick Color Effects. Now, the first thing I like to do is come down to the bottom right side of the interface, see where it says Convert to Smart Object. I always like to check that on because it'll send whatever we do to this image back into Photoshop as a smart object. That way we can come back and re-edit and tweak if we need to. So that's a really nice feature. The first filter I would like to apply to this image is Glamour Glow because I think this image will look nice with a nice, soft, dreamy glow to it. Now, if we look to the left of the interface here under Filters, you can see there are a ton of filters here. Now, DxO have added this search bar, which is really nice. So I'm gonna click in the search bar area and type in GLA for Glamour Glow. And now we see here is Glamour Glow. I'll click the plus and now we have the Glamour Glow filter. Pretty cool. If you look at the Glamour Glow filter, you'll notice we have Glow, Saturation, and Glow Warmth. The only thing I wanna do here is add more Glow. So I'm gonna take the Glow slider and drag it to the right and add a good bit of glow. And I think like right here, 77%. Now, if I uncheck Glamour Glow, we can see there's before and here's after, but a nice dreamy glow, but I'm not stopping here. The title of this video is Exploring Possibilities. So I wanna explore some different possibilities to take this image in a new direction. So I'll be taking some artistic license here. I thought a nice addition to the Glamour Glow would be to add some detail back in, and I will use Clearview, a really cool filter to do that. So I'm going to come back to the search bar and click on the X, and this time I'll type in C-L-E-A-R, and there's Clearview right there. So I'm going to click the plus, and now we have the Clearview filter. Now, by default, it is shut off. The Clearview filter is great for cutting through haze and bringing out some detail. So I'm going to take the intensity slider, and we'll start to drag it to the right. See that detail starting to pop back in there? And I think I'm going to take it to maybe right around there, 53%. Now, let me shut off Clearview. Here's before and here's after. Now let me shut off Glamour Glow. Here's before Glamour Glow and here is after. But see how the Glamour Glow along with the Clear View, the Clear View is making these really cool trees here really pop and I like that. The next thing I want to do is work on the tree color in the background and to do that I'll use an HSL filter. I'll come back to the search bar, click on the X, and this time I'll type in HSL. I'll click on the plus and now we can see we have the HSL filter added to the stack of filters on the right hand side. Now you'll notice we have a bunch of different color swatches here. The first uh, multicolored swatches for general saturation adjustments and by default this one is selected. Now you'll notice with that first swatch, we have hue, saturation, and vibrancy. It's a little different when we click on the color swatches, and I'll show you that in a second. But notice this radius slider here. This is the amount of area that you will sample. Right now, it's set for five pixels. So right now, if I take this radius and I adjust this to the right, I'll make it really extreme, like 37 pixels. And now if I click on the picker tool, 
you see that circle it's sampling all the color inside of that circle area but you can change that radius to a smaller size and i think i'm going to go to maybe around like nine pixels i'll click this button again and now you can see that circle is smaller so i'm going to pick a color like right about here and now if you look at the color bar you can see that is the area that i've selected now these i call these handles these guys could be adjusted. In other words, I could drag this slider to the left and this slider to the right and get more graduation of color. In other words, how those colors taper off into other colors and the top ones you can take and drag those to the right or to the left and encompass more color. But for now, this is the color that I want right here. And just to be clear, if you're not getting all the color that you want, you can go and readjust these different handles and tweak this to encompass the colors you want. But now I want you to notice when you click on a color swatch, these sliders change a little bit. We still have hue, saturation, but now we have luminance. We can adjust the lightness or the darkness of the color. And then we have uniformity where we can make the color more uniform. In other words, if there's various shades of colors, if you drag this to the right, you'll narrow that range down. To the left, you'll make that range a little bit wider. I won't be using the uniformity adjustment for this adjustment, but I have another HSL that I do use it, and I'll show you how it works. And now for the adjustment, what I want to do here is just alter this color. This is where I take an artistic license. I'm going to take the hue and I'll start to drag it to the left. And I want to take it to like right here, minus 22, just to shift that hue, make it a little more interesting. And then I want to take the saturation and I do want to increase that saturation. So I'll drag this to the right and I'm going to take it a good way. I'm going to take it right over to right there. 81 and now i want to take the luminance slider and darken it up a bit and so i'll drag this to the left to darken and i'll take it over to right there minus 13. so let me shut this off here is before and here is after and i really like the way that looks when I study the image, I'm looking at the grass and I really don't like the color of the grass. So I want to work on that next. I still have HSL over here. So I'm going to go ahead and click the plus and add another HSL filter. If you'll notice these trees, it has a lot of the same color as the grass, but I like the color in the tree. So how can I not affect these trees? Well, we have a really cool feature here inside of the new Nick Collection 7. And that is this guy right here, the Polygon Selection Tool. I'm going to click that. And now do you see this target right here? I'm going to click like right here and drag over to here, like this area right here. Click it again. Come down here and click. Drag across here. Click and come back and click here to close this off. And now I have the polygon selection tool right there. And now I'll click on the picker tool and sample a tone in here, maybe like right here. I'm at a five pixel radius and you can see there's the area on the color bar that is selected. First off, I think there's too much saturation. So I'm going to pull back on the saturation and I think I'll take it back to right there, minus 25. And I want to darken it up a bit. So I'll take the luminance slider and start to drag it to the left. If I drag it to the right, you can see I can lighten it, but I want to drag it to the left over to right there, a minus 11. And now the uniformity, you can see there's some like orangish tone down in here. I'm going to take this uniformity slider and I'll start to drag it to the right. And I'm going to take it over to right there, 83. And now we can see that color is much more uniform. We've lost those orange colors in this grass. And I think that looks better. Now let's take a look at a before and after for this HSL filter. I'll uncheck this box. Here's before and here's after. And I think that looks better. I have one final filter and we will be done. I want to add some contrast to this image without affecting the color. Because whenever you add contrast, we generally increase the saturation of the image and I don't want that to happen so we have a special filter in color effects to do that I'll come back over to the search bar click on the x to clear that and I will type in contrast and now we can see the list of all the different contrast filters and color effects I love this search bar if you do too let me know in the comments section below now, the one I'm looking for is contrast only, which only deals with contrast that won't alter the color. So I'm going to click the plus and add this. And you'll notice we've lost some of the saturation. And the reason for that is the 
default setting, it's the soft contrast. I'm going to drag this back to zero. I don't want any soft contrast. And we have a bunch of different sliders here. Brightness, a standard contrast adjustment, a contrast only, which will not affect color, and then soft contrast and saturation. Now notice the contrast only slider is set to 50%, which is the default setting. I don't want that much. I'm going to pull this back and I'll pull this back to like right there, 20%. Now let me shut off the contrast only. Here is before and here is after. See that extra contrast, but it's not affecting color. Now let's see an overall before and after. If I come to compare and left click and hold with my mouse, there is the before, release the left click, here is the after. And I like the uh, split screen view. I'm gonna click this button and then we could drag this slider across. So there's before and there is after. So quite a change to this image. And again, I took a more artistic approach, but I think this looks really cool. Now I'm finished here in Nick Color Effects. All I need to do now is click Apply. That'll send us right back into Photoshop. And here we are back in Photoshop. I'm gonna click the minus on the Nick Collection 7 palette and it'll live right down here. And then if you click this button here, you could pull it back up. But again, click the negative button and you can get it out of your way until you need it again. And now you'll notice we have a layer called Nick 7 Color Effects, and it's a smart filter. I'll shut this layer off. Here is before and here is after. Now, if you need to go back and readjust this, just double click on Nick 7 Color Effects and you will launch Color Effects again, and you can tweak it up, add more filters, change the settings on the filters you already have, whatever you need. Well, there it is, everyone. I hope you enjoyed today's tutorial. And remember, all of DxO software is on sale from now until July 7th, 2024. Use my affiliate links if you want to pick something up or try a free trial. If you enjoyed today's tutorial, please give it a like and share it with your friends. And if you're not yet a subscriber to my channel, please subscribe, click that bell notification icon, click all so that you'll receive all notifications. And then every time I upload a new tutorial, you'll get notified about it. I want to thank each and every one of you for joining me today in the joy of editing with Dave Kelly. And I will see you all right here next time. But until then, happy editing.